duty. And when they're telling me they have to deal with things that, if you've ever seen the movie The Cave and the Descent, uh-huh. they're telling me of, of stories that, that literally when some of the bravest and some of the toughest, the most dangerous men in the world, literally encounter this stuff and what has to happen in order to fight these things, I'm telling you, it takes a whole uh, a level of uh, 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 unreality out of the equation and puts you immediately thrust into a world that has been, if you will, matrixed or, or kept from us. And I'm wondering how people are going to adjust. So when you, the scenario I'm laying out is obviously a threat will have to be generated. You have to obviously have the fear factor. With the threat will have to be enough visible evidence and enough anecdotal evidence to make people start uh, uh, starting to worry. And, uh, for instance, more abductions, entire groups of people disappearing. And, and get more and more of this information out. Absolutely. Right? So I believe that's already started, especially with uh, the Catholic Church has been probably on the forefront of talking about, number one, can aliens be saved? Do they need to be saved? Uh, do they, are they beyond the grace of God? Are they all evil? Are they good? And, I mean, when you start seeing this in... Uh, I know, it was in, and, and also, you know, you can believe in extraterrestrials and not worry about your belief in God. I mean, those were just fascinating statements. Right. This is, this is a quantum shift. This is what's called a transform thought uh, indication, simply stating that what has been the accepted and uh, usually uh, taught, if you will, or closely held beliefs are now opening up. And I can tell people this. Most people don't understand the Vatican has an intelligence agency second to none. They hook in with the major intelligence agencies in the West and obviously have uh, ties to the East also. So when uh, Malachi Martin, for instance, Father Malachi Martin, before his death, he was talking about this stuff. And there are people, myself included, that believe he was murdered for, at that point in time, saying too much. When I've had four-star generals tell me that the number one and two uh, things that... uh, NASA does not want the people to deal with openly. It's Stargates. Now, this was years ago. And also the giants or the aliens or the crossbreeds or the what are called incubatoriums, the secret underground labs. We've all heard uh, uh, Phil Schneider, or a lot of people have heard Phil Schneider's interview before, by the way, he was murdered, of the battles in Dulce. Uh, Dulce is the underground base in Dulce, New Mexico. Exactly. And I can tell you this, that I've literally talked to the, the people that, uh, are, are charged with going into these bases when some of these things get loose. And when I talk about some of these things, it's interesting that people have a hard time understanding that the Russians, one of the foremost eye surgeons in the world, the foremost, not one of the foremost, I want to correct myself, Dr. Ernest Moldeshev, probably the lead investigator looking the world over for uh, giants, was talking to about uh, a certain vicinity that even some of these giants that are in suspended animation that you cannot go beyond a certain uh, barrier before literally the emanations coming out of their uh, brains almost telepathically begin to almost huh. tear your head apart. Now, this is, this is coming from a Russia that was taken into the caves in the Himalayas. Now, I jumped to one of the underground bases, in this case we'll go to Dulce, where uh, a specific group of very brave and and uh, amazing men and women that are without equal. When I say without equal, it's one thing to deal with something you can see. It's another thing to have to deal with this stuff. That's right. But they talk about a group of scientists that would not obey the red line. The red line is a literal geographical distance. Of, you know, I think it's like 14 or 17 feet where they cannot go, even beyond where these things are caged. And uh, some found out the hard way. And basically, uh, you know, I mean, it sounded like... Uh, 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 to me, it was that these these things were able to literally uh, take these individuals apart. I think I was told that over a dozen scientists perished underground when they thought that uh, the red line, it's painted on the floor, by the way, in one of these areas. Jeez. So, you know, these are stories. People say, oh, this is all crazy stuff. What are you drinking? I don't drink. What are you smoking? Don't smoke. And the thing <laughs> is, is that in the mouth of, of, of two or three witnesses, every word can be established. So, What I've tried to do, George, as you know, as I track different people down around the world and talk to them, I obviously have bits of information that I keep uh, close to the vest that uh, A doesn't know that I necessarily know, and B doesn't know that I necessarily know. I, I, I have long suspected that as much as you reveal on this program and your own, that sometimes you hold back for a reason. I do. 
because if I if that's the only way that I have of being able to verify. Now, look, and in, in, you know, in talk radio, we're all subject to information, misinformation, and disinformation. You, you got to weed through it. You got to weed through it. But the only way that I can can basically bring uh, the best job that I can do is get independent verification of the same event from different sources, unknown to each other. And when the details stack up, five points for five points, I got to tell you something. There is uh, no doubt in my mind that I've been given the truth. Now, again, people say, well, why would anybody talk to you? Well, it's simple, because my goal is to give people a realistic heads up, a future glimpse, if you will, of what lies on the horizon. In this case, the event horizon is upon us. And, and as we talk later in the show, there are so many events taking place. For instance, the, the Hadron Collider. A lot of people have a hard time understanding of the idea of a stargate. And it goes online next week. And it goes online next week, barring, as you're probably aware, there's a lawsuit against it. Right, two of them, actually. Right. Now, one in Europe, one here. Right, but what's fascinating to people, they should understand, just in the last two years, George, if you look at all the nuclear power anomalies worldwide, okay, there have been so many nuclear anomalies, Rose Havari and some of the sites that monitor all the different events, literally record... And, and put out on a, on a map, you can go on their site and, uh, and see all the anomalies. When I, when I talk to a specific group of military individuals about that, they said, Steve, they can only keep the gates open for 10 seconds at a time. And there have been, in no kidding, there have been 50 to 60 separate events in nuclear reactors. This is unrelated to earthquakes. It's, it's just like there were never any events. So uh, when when Hawk, who was a, a guest host, you and I've talked about him, yes, uh, that uh, that uh, used to take my show for me one day a week. When he was the first to acknowledge that and pick it up, it started to uh, become really really apparent that someone's diverting a horrific amount of power for some purpose, and they'll usually come up and say, "Oh, they had a leak of radioactive water," blah blah blah. But what people don't understand is, is that it takes a horrific amount of energy to power the gates. And when, when I approached a certain group of individuals about this and I said, okay, why are all of these events happening? And they're saying they're opening the gates. Now, what's fascinating is, is that Jesus made a statement, interesting statement, that the gates of hell will not prevail against the people of faith, okay, against his church, which he told to Peter. Now, most people think of gate, you know, you don't get beat up by a gate, okay? <laughs> but a gate either holds something back or allows something through. That's right. And so the fact is, is that the Stargates, now what I'm bringing that right into the Hadron Super Collider, when you, when you remember, the George, the, the show The Time Tunnel? Yes. Isn't it fascinating yeah. if you take that science fiction show, what, late 60s, maybe early 70s? It's just like CERN. Yeah, it's just like CERN. So... The point is, is that in quantum physics, obviously, the the realm of what I call black physics, and black physics are are, are the realm of of uh, what I would say hyperdimensional physics that uh, Richard Hoagland and others talk about that exist beyond the standard training of, let's say, a physics teacher in college, and in the world of intelligence, or as I usually say, lack of it. The point is, is that you, you are compartmentalized. The information you're given is usually you get to build part A of the alphabet through Z, and you don't always see unless your security clearance is high enough. We're talking about uh, clearances that are, are majestic, are cosmic. These are real names of clearances that are, are, are 28 levels above top secret. So what's fascinating to me is, is that the warnings that are going out are real. And unfortunately, the people that are are now watching the hurricanes. We've got four on the horizon. I would encourage everyone to pay specific attention. Google Earth.